Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of a new video series with the Rise program called Going Pro, Learning from the Leaders in the Sports Industry. My name is Elena Kachan. I am the Marketing Manager at Ortho Carolina, and I've got some really awesome guests today. Um, last episode, if you're with us, we talked to a bunch of social media experts and they talked about what it was like being in social media behind the scenes. And today I've got two awesome people in the sports broadcasting industry. So I'm really excited to welcome a few of my friends. Um, we have Ashley Shamady. Uh, she is a Charlotte Hornets sideline reporter. She also handles pre and post game hosts. She also handles pre and post game reports on Valley Sports and on the side, Ashley is also an entertainment correspondent for CMT's Hot 20 Countdown, which is exciting. So I'm excited to see uh, and hear from her a little bit more. And we also have Zach Aldridge. He is a sports anchor and sports reporter at WCCB, and he is new to Charlotte, but I'm excited to see what the ins and outs of what they do each day. So um, guys, I know that was a quick intro, but I would love to speak with you guys um, individually. And we'll start with you, Ashley. Tell us um, a little bit about you and what it's like to be in your role. Yeah, so uh, hello, happy to be here, happy to talk to you guys. I am the Hornets sideline reporter and host of the pre and post game show. I started in sports broadcasting, kind of how Zach is doing it in local news, but in a really, really tiny town in Mississippi. That's kind of how I got my start um, as like a weekend sports anchor and spent a couple of years doing that and just sort of worked my way up. Then I did digital reporting for Fox Sports South, which is now Valley sports. They did a little bit of a name change there, but um, that's kind of how I got my foot in the door with like a network going from, you know, broadcasting local television to more of a regional network, which was kind of my, my plan or my goal. And then from there, um, the Fox sports South Valley sports. Now they broadcast the Hawks, the Hornets, um, the Atlanta Braves, um, a couple of hockey teams as well. And so they needed a host for Hornets Live, the pre and post game show. So I just started doing that now three years ago. Um, and I would just do the home games. And then when their sideline reporter left, they said, pack your bags. And I lived in a hotel for five months that first season and was the sideline reporter. And now I, I live in Charlotte and um, yeah, I love it. It's, it's been, oh my gosh, so much fun. Last year was supposed to be kind of like my first full season doing it, but then COVID happened. So this year is a little bit different. We're not traveling or anything, but still very much in it. And, um, the Hornets are really exciting to watch. It's been a fun year. It's been a really great year for you. That's awesome. And I follow you on social media too, and you do <laughs> so much on social media. So if anybody's out there, um, looking for a little bit of behind the scenes action, definitely give her a follow. Um, thank you for that intro. And I want to talk to Zach too. Can you tell us a little bit about um, you and how you got to where you are right now? Yeah. Uh, first, thanks for having me. Pleasure to be able to be here and, and talk to all of you guys. I uh, have been here in Charlotte, which seems like it's flown by. It's been three years already, which is uh, definitely crazy. So I work for WCCB, the CW affiliate here in Charlotte, which is like channel 18 for those of y'all uh, back at home when you watch. And uh, so I'm a sports anchor slash reporter. Prior to that, I've been in local TV um, this entire time. I worked in Orlando for three years before uh, coming to Charlotte. And before that, I got my first job out of college in Gainesville, Florida, which is where I went to school. I went to the University of Florida. So I worked there for two years as a weekend sports anchor. Um, born and raised in Florida. So this is actually my first time ever living outside of Florida. So that's been an adjustment. But I love Charlotte now. Um, it's really been a great city being able to cover more pro teams and having the Panthers that we cover and the Hornets and then NASCAR and the PGA Tour that comes through to Charlotte. So a lot of different um, sports events has made Charlotte be a, a great city and a great destination to work. And I can't complain about it at all. I love that. So funny story, Zach and I met right when you moved here. So yeah. <laughs> like, it's so crazy that three years have gone by. Um, but now you're getting used to the North Carolina weather. I'm sure it's a lot different. Um, but I've been seeing you crush it too. Obviously you have a great social media presence as well. Um, you can all follow him uh, to get a little bit of a sneak peek as to what he does at WCCB. Um, so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about 
um, what you guys actually do day in and day out. I know broadcasting is um, super visible to the average consumer. If you're a sports fan, you've seen broadcasters, you get the whole, your whole spiel. You guys really have to do so much. Um, Ashley, maybe you can kind of start me off with what does a broadcasting professional actually do? What does being a sideline reporter mean? Um, and pre and post game reports, what does that look like? Well, I just want to, you know, give a shout out to what Zach does too, because in local news, I don't think my friends still truly understood what I would do every day. I mean, it is, I did it for four years and I still don't think, I think they thought that I just like put on makeup and went in front of the camera and read a prompter. And I'm like, I was just sweating profusely on the Mississippi heat football field, getting shots of practice or a game or whatever it may be, rushing back to, um, to our station, writing a script and like getting it in time for like the six o'clock or the 10 o'clock news. So man, it is people, I don't think really understand the behind the scenes of local news at all. But um, as far as what I do now, so it's, it's kind of, you know, the same type of grind. Like today we don't have a game, but the work really never stops. If we don't have a game, I'm preparing for the next game, especially this season, because with a shortened season um, it's literally been, every other day, if not every day. Um, there's been a very small, uh, very slim times where we've had, you know, more than one day in between games. So it's always like, okay, we have a game and then the next day I'm preparing for the next game, either listening to zoom interviews, interviewing players, you know, on the side or trying to come up with sideline stories for the next game or researching the other team, whatever it may be. So Basically, it is pretty nonstop for the entire season. Um, And then when we travel, it's even like uh, more hectic sometimes just because, you know, like I said, I'm either preparing for the next game on the plane as we're headed there or, you know, after a practice or after a game, we won't get to the next city until like 2 a.m. And then if it's a back to back, I have to wake up at like 8 a.m. and, you know, do it all over again. So I definitely obviously wouldn't trade it for anything I love my job so much, but it's just kind of something that I don't think people truly, you know, understand with, it looks all glamorous and, you know, we're flying, um, to these cool cities and staying in these nice hotels and yes it is, but it is just such a man. It, it's so demanding. It's really demanding. Not to mention like, you know, I'm away from my family for the entirety of the season and, um, just kind of a lot of sacrifices that come with just broadcasting in general. So I always try and make sure, you know, people realize, I guess, what they're getting into before they get into it. But um, I love it. So it's obviously so worth it. I think that's super helpful that you shared that, Um, not to scare anybody, but to also give the real life version of what it looks like. And it sounds like your team, no sleep. Seriously. I don't know (laughs) how you do it. Like constantly on the go. I know. Um, which is wild to think about, but, uh, Zach, you could probably speak to that a little bit too, because you work in the evenings, correct? So tell us a little bit about what you do at the station, um, and really what that's like in comparison to maybe, um, what Ashley does in on being on the road. Yeah. So Ashley was spot on with saying that like you, you see the part on TV and it seems like it's the glitz and glam, but there is so much buildup and hours that go into getting ready for that few minutes that you'll see me or whoever on TV that that people have have no idea about. Um, Monday through Friday, we have a show only at 10 o'clock. And then on the weekends, we have a show at 6 and 10 p.m. Um, but realistically, Ooh. say it's a Saturday and maybe it's during football season. And or right now, Charlotte 49ers are holding their spring practices. We'll go out to like the practice in the morning or their their spring game is actually coming up really soon. And it's like you'll go shoot that at noon. So then your day starts at noon, but you're not going to be on air until six o'clock. So it was like you shoot that and you start your day and then you come into the studio and you got to figure out, okay, what do I want to talk about and what do I want to have in my show? What do people in Charlotte care about when it comes to sports? Because you're not going to talk about like, the Lakers or the Yankees because folks won't care about those sports. So you got to keep it like regional specific for what do people in your area want to hear about. So you kind of decide all that and then, okay, I'll build, okay, I'm going to do this, talk about the Hornets and I'll do the Panthers. And then I have this other story about a high school football game because the playoffs are going on. So I'll go shoot that game as well. Then I'll come back to the station edit all the video. So everything that you see on air, someone has to like to cut that video and send it in. So I'll be the one that does that. I also write everything that I say. 
And then it's the part where it's like the actual performance, so to speak, of if it's game time, then you go do that and do it on air. And it's, it's like a make or break moment because it's, it's just like a sporting event, realistically. Like you have one shot to really get it all right. And you've been working and practicing, so to speak, all day long to get ready for it. And then you got to just knock it out the park to keep like the, the sports metaphors going when <laughs> you're on air. And that's, that's how it is. <laughs> I love that. Um, and I was honestly just about to ask just for the people who really don't know what it's like, um, you have to write and produce almost all of your stuff. I, I mean, you mentioned, um, having to write your scripts that you're going to read off the teleprompter and, um, produce your own stuff, your own packages. What is that like? You know, is the preparation as grueling as it sounds? I mean, how do you handle that? <laughs> yeah, it, it gets to a point where I guess now it feels weird. I have eight years experience of doing this. I guess this actually might be 2020. Yeah, something around there. Time is time is crazy. Nine years, maybe. Um, so you get to a point where it's kind of like you get into a flow and I know where I'm going to go for research to check out different websites to get my information and my stats and all. And I kind of can, so to speak, do it in my sleep a little bit. And I, I enjoy that because sometimes it's definitely a rush. And that's what I probably love the most about this business is the rush of okay, the show starts in 30 minutes and I still have this much more to do. And like my heart's pounding. I'm like, man, I'm going to finish this all in time. I need to, I still, I haven't done my tie yet. I haven't put stuff in my hair. Like I'm, I'm not ready, but like, I love that, that feeling of like, can I be ready in time? And like not being ready isn't an option. Um, so I think that I like, I love that. It's really fail and don't be on TV and get fired or like go and do your job. Um, but it's, it's definitely hours that go into it, but I, I love every minute of it. Yeah. The fact that you said that, I mean, you really have to be on at all times and Ashley, I'm sure as a woman, you have to be really, really ready. No offense, Zach, but it takes a little bit longer for us ladies to look presentable. Um, do you, do you get excitement out of that adrenaline, the rush, um, you know, always being on the go being always being on, what is that like for you? No, I definitely love it. I like when COVID happened and the world shut down, I'm just not good at not working. So that was very difficult for me just to like, I mean, no, there was no sports and that's all I knew. So that was very hard for me. Um, definitely put things into perspective and then change kind of my priorities and everything. But yes, it is, uh, no offense to you, Zach, but changing out a tie every night, you're like, Oh, brand new person. But it's like, um, no, I need, you know, new outfits, makeup, hair. Like I do all that myself. I would love one day if someone could do it for me because blow drying my hair is my least favorite thing in the world. But no, I, you know, the prep work that goes into it, cause I am the sideline reporter, but the biggest thing that takes the most time is the pregame show. Um, you know, we have a producer, but he'll give us a format. So it's basically just like, okay, we're going to talk about Terry Rozier, you know, scoring 30 points, had five assists, 10 rebounds, record books for that, that stat line or something, or it'll just say like PJ Washington or just one thing. And so I really try and, you know, do as much research as I can. And like Zach said, it's like, I know the websites that I can go to and, and what I'm kind of looking for, but I, you know, basically plan out the whole show just because I'm like the traffic cop pretty much. I'm like getting, you know, our analyst Del Curry or Gerald Henderson from point A to point B. And then if we have to fill time, my producers in my ear are saying, you know, we're light or we're heavy, um, just having questions and follow-ups and everything like that. And so it's a couple of hours every night of research and, um, you know, just writing out whatever I can and talking about the other team and and all that. And then just being ready. Yes. It's so funny because, you know, I work with basically all males. So for Dell and then Eric Collins, our play by play, when we're on the road, you know, they'll go, Dell will go play 18 holes before game or <laughs> Eric will, you know, go meet someone and go out to lunch or something like that. And, you know, I have to go back to the hotel hours before because I'm like, well, I have to go wash my hair. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, seriously, it'll take me yeah. at least like an hour just to do my hair. So, I mean, it's just part of the business. And of course I love it too, because it's just so go, 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 especially when, you know, we're traveling, but even this year, it's, I feel like it's been just because it's the shortened season and there's so many games in such a small amount of time. It has been nonstop, but I thrive in that too. I, I really do like that. The men will never know what we have to go through ever, ever. <laughs> no offense, Zach. Um, 
I, I love that you guys talked about how you were kind of made for this. Um, and you love like the on the go high speed, um, you know, tons of prep work. It sounds like you guys like have a little bit of an encyclopedia in your head. Um, and you have to memorize a lot of things, but what traits would you say are needed to be successful in the media industry? I know that, um, you know, for some people who might think that they want to go into this industry, um, is there anything that they could focus on or hone in on a specific skill? Um, kind of goes in with what you guys were kind of just talking about, but maybe, um, either one of you, if you wanted to share your thoughts on that. Um, I mean, just a couple of things right off the bat is, you know, sacrifice and, and, you know, being open and willing. Did I, I graduated from university of Georgia. So, um, you know, my family lives in Georgia and did I think my very first job was going to be in Meridian, Mississippi, which I don't think a lot of people even know where that is. It's like, a tiny, like truck stop town. And, you know, it was the most wonderful first job I could have ever asked for just because I got to cover so much and, and really hone in on my on-camera presence, interviewing everything like that on a smaller stage, which was really nice. But did I think that that was going to be my first job and I was going to move and know nobody and start new and, um, it's just a lot of sacrifice and just being open-minded to, you know, was that going to be my dream job? No, but I knew I had to put in that time and that work and, um, those couple of years in Mississippi to just build up and, and get to where I'm going. And a lot of times people will ask me like, Oh, how did you get a job in the NBA? Like, that's my dream job. And I'm like, well, actually I started in local news in a really small town. And a lot of the times I'm uh, my, the responses are like, Oh, well, that's not really what I want to do. And I'm like, I, I know that I totally get it, but you just kind of have to do what it takes. And I think that is just the biggest thing. If you have your head strong about your goals and um, where you want to see yourself, then I truly think the sky is the limit when it comes to that. So I totally agree. It is such a grind. And we're learning that from every single panel we do, because everybody's like, did I have my dream job at the beginning? Absolutely not. But am I making it? Yeah. So I think it does take a lot of that dedication and grind, but Zach, what about for you? Anything that stands out in terms of like what these kids need to be ready for? Yeah. I think that first what Ashley said, it was absolutely perfect. Um, Cause like to give Ashley props, like people will grind their whole lives to be in Ashley's position, like to want to have her job. And like, it's not, it's not easy. Like there's only so many pro teams for every single sport. Mm -hmm. um, so like, you've got to kind of know in the back of your head, you might have this goal, but you've got to like really, really get after it. Cause there's so many people who want to be where you are and you have to be, you know, patient and, and okay with everything and, and take it as it may and, and be like, as you said, okay with starting in a city that like, I don't want to live in, you know, North Dakota, no offense to anybody who <laughs> might be there, but like, so like, Oh, I don't want to be in Wyoming. Cause like that, that's what happens more often than not for people who want to be in TV. Like you don't just kind of stumble a, a, across being and covering a pro team or being in like a big city from jump. So like, I definitely was blessed being able to have my first job in the same city where I went to college and I didn't have to have that transition of being Lord knows wherever. Um, so I'd say like some of the things that's like really, really important is to be adaptable. Um, no matter what situation you're in, like once you get a job, you'll be thrown stuff and you gotta like sink or swim really and be willing to roll with the punches. And uh, to just be like a personable person, like the friendlier you are, the nicer you are to people, like it's really all about, and this is kind of for everything in life, like your connections is what matters the most. So like make a good impression on people and, and be nice and be kind. And that can take you so, so far. Be a so pleasure true. to work with. Yeah. Be a pleasure to work with because that will absolutely take you far. Yeah. Absolutely. This is some great advice. I want to kind of flip this on its head though. I know, um, Zach, you were talking about how you had a job in your hometown or where you went to college and then you moved to Charlotte. Are you finding it tough? And I'm just personally curious to um, curate like a Charlotte specific script or a Charlotte specific um, content when you're kind of new to the city. I know that um, that goes into the adaptability and, and probably for you too, Ashley, just kind of learning everything there is to know about what these people care about who are kind of following the news and following your teams. Uh, tell yeah. me a little bit about what that, it's, that's it's, like. It's, it's crazy you say that. Cause I remember when I first moved here, I was, well, it was one of my first weeks of working and I was just kind of sitting there trying to fill, figure out my rundown. And I was thinking like, how do I even know what's going on in Charlotte right now? Like I know there's the Hornets and I know there's the Panthers, but outside of that, like 
I'm so lost. Like, I don't know who to follow on Twitter. I don't know, you know, what, like who, who's my go-to people. Um, and it kind of really, it just came with time. Of course, like I'll look things up and read newspapers and things to figure out, okay, well, what are folks talking about? Like, what are the good high schools in football here? Who's good at basketball? Um, and it, it took time to figure out the lay of the land and the area and to know, okay, these are the folks that I need to be following. And this is like my go-to spots to figure out information to know what I, I should put in my show every night. Um, because in the beginning, coming from Orlando, like I had no idea. Like I, I truly was like really, really lost. And I remember texting one of my old coworkers and saying like, how do I do this? I honestly, I, I didn't know what to do because there was one thing that I had in my show that I just happened to catch on the bottom line of ESPN. And it was like a pretty big headline for Charlotte sports. I can't remember what it was, but I remember thinking, had I not seen that bottom line update, like I wouldn't have had it in my show. And then it's like, someone's watching like, oh, well, why did Zach not talk about that? And then they send an email to the station. And I'm like, I mean, I just moved here. I, I didn't know. And like, <laughs> That's not even an excuse, but is that's that's true. Like it really takes time to to figure out what people care about in the community. Stay ready, think, so you don't have to get ready. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta yeah. be always on head on a swivel. It, it seems. Yeah, and you know, before me, it was Stephanie Reddy, who was a sideline reporter here in Charlotte for ten years. So people loved her. I mean, she's so wonderful and she's on to wonderful things. She's working um, with Turner and she does these national games. She's just crushing it. But, you know, for her to be here for 10 years, she developed this fan base. And I remember when I first started, people were very nice and very welcoming, but there were definitely some comments like, well, you're not Stephanie or I'm not watching because you're not Stephanie. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> so you just have to like warm up to the crowd, I feel like, and, um, you know, develop that fan base. And also the biggest difference from going from local news, this is so random and it's kind of off on a tangent, but there is no prompter in um, our like Hornets live pregame show and postgame show. There's no prompter, none at all. Like it is literally a rundown and ad lib. And I think that is the biggest thing that i kind of try and reiterate with people too. If you can practice anything, just like talking naturally or, you know, your interviews or practicing in front of a mirror, just naturally, because that was the biggest change um, when I got here. Cause you know, I love inter interviewing people. I love talking to people, getting their story. Like that's, you know, kind of second nature to me. I, I love it so much, but not having a prompter to like rely on just in case, or, you know, not really having your notes or anything, just like going up there, being, um, having a conversation. That's what they love. Just like talking to our analysts and just kind of, you know, bouncing ideas off each other and talking about the Hornets is what they really want us to do, but it was a big change for sure. It's so funny that you say that. So my background, I did, um, sidelines at App State Appalachian for basketball and football. And I totally know what you mean when it is all up to you to like keep yes. things going. You have to know what's going on. You have to pay attention. I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many pieces to that puzzle and they're relying on you to fill that time and fill that space. So you guys are under a lot of pressure, especially because thousands and millions of people are seeing this. <laughs> oh my so, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to scare people, but it is hard. Like it, and it's, it's like, not for the faint of heart. When you're not like, when I'm not talking, if, if I'm like trying to collect my thought, five seconds feels like I was silent for a minute. And I will look, I always like watch, rewatch interviews or clips or anything like that and just kind of critique myself. And I mean, it probably doesn't seem like much to the viewer watching, but I felt like, <laughs> like if I wasn't talking or keeping things rolling for five seconds, it was like a dead silence for a minute. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so awkward, blah, blah, blah. But no, it just takes practice, obviously. <laughs> So much pressure. Zach, do you feel like you have a team behind you that can kind of keep you going if you've got producers in the show? I mean, what's that like for them to kind of keep you pumped up and keep you ready and give you some direction? Yeah. Um, it, it's a probably a little bit different in studio, wouldn't you say? Yeah. So during the show, just kind of how Ashley mentioned earlier about a producer who will be someone like this in our ear talking to us about, okay, you know, you have this much time left in the show or whatnot, because we do a, a 30 minute show every Sunday. Um, so we'll have someone in our ear telling us, okay, like you need to go to break. It's time. Okay. Like rap, you've been talking too long, like, or, or you need to stretch because there's not enough content and we can't go to commercial break yet. So we need to fill 30 more seconds, a minute, which like might kind of seem like nothing. But when, if you're like a minute light on TV, that is such a long time to just fill when you're not 
planned in your mind to be able to fill it. Um, so to have someone kind of talk you through and tell you like, okay, okay, you know, keep going, keep going. That's when that ad living that Ashley was talking about and being able to be comfortable just out there talking and trying to not sound like a fool and to be able to <laughs> just keep it going is, is so, so important. And I think like, it's like really like props to Ashley. Cause like what she does from having to like host a show before the game starts and then be fully engaged during the show and report on it and have different hits and then do the same thing after the game and interview players. Like it's difficult. It, it is not easy at all. And she has to be like so locked in because a lot of times you'll have someone maybe just host a show and then a different person be the reporter. But for Ashley to do like both duties and to wear both hats, like it is very, very impressive. And it's, it's like not easy at all. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. You're, I mean, like I said, starting in local news, I totally get it. I can't, I, I started in small town, Mississippi, and I felt like there were a million and one high school teams that I had to cover. So I can't even imagine doing it in a bigger city. So yeah. props to you too. <laughs> I was going to say, speaking of the fact that you guys do different things, but ultimately share the same role, essentially. Um, I want, I have two final questions. One being, um, do you have any memorable moments or like standout coverage moments? Um, and this wasn't planned. So take a moment if you need to, but um, anybody that you interviewed that you were really proud of or like a really stellar show that you got recognized for, I mean, are there any standout moments that you want to share just because I feel like you do guys, you have a cool job. So maybe anything you can share to um, kind of excite these guys that are looking to go into this field. Zach, do you want to go first? Yeah, okay. Um, my first job when I was working in Gainesville, it was during the NCAA tournament. And this was back in, I think, 2015, either 2014 or 2015. And my boss, the sports director, he was in, it might have been Texas, covering the Florida Gators. It was right before they had won in the Sweet 16 to advance to the Elite Eight. And I was back in Gainesville anchoring for the show. And because of like TV rules and everything, you can't like show highlights immediately of the NCAA tournament. Um, but instead of just showing like the score on the screen, I wanted to do something fun and interactive. And I came up with this, like, I don't know how I come up with some of these ideas realistically, but I wanted to reenact the major moments from the game. Um, so myself and our weekend meteorologist, we dressed up and we just both had on like our blue shirts. And then I had two people working station. They wore red and we were the Gators and the other two, they were Dayton. And we went into our conference room and just reenacted the things. And I filmed it and I edited it and then we came back and I did it on TV. And like back then, like it went, it went viral and stuff. And that was the craziest moment um that I've ever done because it was just an idea I had in my head and I was like all right let's go let's go for it and go with it um but that was uh probably like my most memorable moment of my of my career so far like doing that it was a wild idea and then people actually loved it and I just did it because it was fun I thought it'd be cool and, and people actually liked it and you were right that's so fun yeah. I love that you said that I mean it's like sometimes the most unexpected things that go viral and like stand out in our minds so that was a great story yeah. thanks for sharing <laughs> Ashley, what about you? That is awesome. Um, I guess, you know, from the local news days in Mississippi, just one time that kind of sticks out is basically when, you know, Dak Prescott was with Mississippi State and Chad Kelly was with Ole Miss and they were both number, like they literally switched off weeks of being the number one team in the nation. And I just remember covering them during that time. And it was so much fun just because there was so much attention, obviously on Mississippi and college football. And then the same with women's basketball, the Mississippi state women's basketball team that made it to the finals, lost to UConn, the shot heard around the world, all that stuff. Um, just being in Mississippi and being able to cover that team was incredible. It was such an incredible run. So I loved, I loved that time. But then I think obviously here, um, the day I met Michael Jordan was probably my most memorable because I mean, I played basketball growing up. He was obviously my all-time favorite. I, I just, oh my gosh. And then after this documentary that I'm sure everyone watched during COVID is <laughs> Jordan documentary. I just have even more of a respect for him, but it was just so unexpected. He obviously comes around the team a lot and everything, but, um, the very first time I met him, I was just at practice, you know, scribbling notes. I, um, had glasses on just like a 
you know, sweatshirt on nothing, nothing too crazy or anything. And I'm just like writing notes and someone goes, Hey, and I like look up and it's literally Michael Jordan. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like I'm Ashley. He goes, Oh, I know who you are. Like he watches every game. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, duh. Like, of course he knows who I am. (laughs) But it was just like the most surreal moment ever just because I I try not to fangirl on this job at all just because try and keep it really professional and everything like that but meeting Michael Jordan I absolutely fangirled I ran out of there so fast and called my mom right away (laughs) I honestly yeah you had to keep your cool but like I feel you as a basketball player myself I would have been freaking out um that's an amazing story I love that um, so, Hey, you never know You might get to meet Michael Jordan if you go down this route. So <laughs> it's always a fun uh, thing to look forward to or hope for. Um, so I've got one final question. Um, and we'll kind of close us out here with this. Um, if you could tell yourself at 17, anything, when you started this journey, um, I know you guys kind of gave a little bit of advice here and there throughout the, um, conversation, but maybe one piece of advice you'd give to your 17 year old self, if you were to go back. Zach, you want to go first again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I, I think I'd tell 17-year-old me that it's possible to make a living out of this um, because I remember when I was 17, that was when I was a senior in high school, thinking in my mind, oh, I'd love to be an anchor on Sports Center one day, but I don't know how to get there. Like, I don't know if you can make a living in doing TV stuff, like if you're not on ESPN. Um, so I'd say it, it's possible to make a living. Like you're not going to be – especially when you're starting out you're not going to be super super rich um which people think about folks on tv but like that couldn't be further from the truth um but i I tell myself that it's possible be patient and like just like work hard and grind and enjoy it wherever it takes you oh yeah i going along with that you could not have hit the nail on the head better than that because um you know I I made no money when I first started. I worked all the time. I was away from my family. It was just like, there were definitely moments where I was like, oh my gosh, like, is this, is this how it's going to be forever, you know, type of thing. And I I just think the biggest thing is to just don't stop. If this is something that you truly, truly want, it takes a really hardworking, determined person, I feel like to be in this business, but if it's something you want, it is absolutely attainable. And you just have to put in the years, put in the work. Um, You definitely can, can get to that point. And you know, it, it's wonderful, but there's just a lot of sacrifice to it. So just, you know, kind of knowing that going into it, I think is really important, but it is, you can do it. Just, you just can't, you know, give up. It's going to be hard sometimes and it's not going to be exactly what you want or expect, but, um, there are just so many moments where it's like, I mean, I, I pinch myself all the time thinking like, I literally talk about Hornets basketball, yeah. basketball in general, every single day, like that, this is my job, which I just think is so cool. So. I love that. I think you guys are both really crushing it in your careers, which is why I wanted to talk to you guys to get the inside look um, and kind of help some of these younger folks um, really see what it's like to be in this industry. Um, And uh, for you watching, we are going to talk to some other professionals later down the line, um, but we really appreciate you guys. coming on, chatting with us. Uh, I think this went great. Um, If you guys have any questions for them, I'm sure their DMs are open. Um, They are on social media, which we will share. Um, But thank you guys so much for joining. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. It's been great. (laughs) Thanks for having me.